What's up guys, it's me Dovnatic and welcome back to the, or welcome, I should say, to the second battle of the PPL Season 1, and this game is against Fred Ford, aka Oscar, and, uh, well, after my loss in the first game, I was pretty determined to, uh, beat Fred in the second game, and I felt that I had the upper hand with the team selection. I felt confident in what he was going to bring, but only about a few hours before the game started. Because, thanks to Ellie, she raised the issue that I thought team... Uh, sorry, hang on, let me start again. She raised the issue that my team's fast and that Fred could easily run a trick room team. So I was like, shit, you know what, he's going to bring a trick room team. So I'd already made my team, I didn't want to go changing it based on that hunch. I was pretty sure he was going to bring it, but I didn't go change too much. So, as I'm really short on time at the moment, it's my birthday coming up and I'm going to be all over the place, so that's why I haven't got any fancy uh, GFX, fancy GFX uh, sort of demonstrating my Pokemon sets. I'll quickly, briefly go over them. While you can see my prediction of Fred's team on the screen right now, it's uh, the Pokemon that would benefit his trick from the most, and it turned out it was exactly what he brought. Um, I predicted it correctly. And so we'll see how the game goes. Um, and obviously his team in Trick Room is scary. Kyron Black um, is fast in Trick Room or not or without Trick Room. So, you know, it's scary stuff. Mega Mawile, always scary. Um, but he um, base 125 uh, special attack. That's also scary. And um, Kecleon with Protein is always tricky too, but it was obvious Kecleon and Behemoth were his uh, trick room uses, so I had to get rid of them uh, soon enough. He was definitely going to lead off with one of them, or that was my thought anyway, because he needed to get the trick room up, otherwise he was going to be in deep trouble. Um, so I had to try and kill something fast, so we'll go over that more in detail when the battle comes up. Um, what else did he have? He had Dragalgy, which he was actually talking about dropping, which made me not really think about trick room to start off with until Ellie suggested it, and I thought, is he going to bring it? Because then he'll have three dragons on his team, and I could destroy it with uh, a fairy, or my own dragon, so... That was something I considered. Um, I did have Ments, Scarfed, you know, just to outspeed them all if I needed to, but we'll go over that again in more detail in a second. And the last team member was... I, what was it? I can't even remember what it was now. Let me open the picture. What do we got? Mawile, Dragalgy, Latios, that's it. That was his one fast Pokémon. Um, which he, I believed he would rely on to outspeed me, because that and Heliolisk were the only Pokemon that could potentially um, outspeed some of my mom. Uh, I think, I can't remember what his highest base speed Pokemon was, but as he was bringing a Trick Room team, or I had the hunch he was bringing a Trick Room team, um, I wasn't expecting too much speed on it. So he did have the Latios, so that was his team, and it turned out to be his actual team. My team! Um, wasn't there was only actually one Pokemon change from Ellie's my, my battle with Ellie, but some of the sets changed. So we have Empoleon, which is actually the same set, other than I replaced Knockoff with Ice Beam because dragons. Um, Knockoff would have been nice, I, admittedly, but um, there were too many, too many things on this team that were going to be hit by Ice Beam so nicely that I had to I had to run it. Um, Terrakion's here with Life Orb and Adamant, because I thought he was going to be in Trick Room team, I might as well not bother running Jolly. Um, Adamant was the difference between KOing some Pokemon and not some Pokemon after Stealth Rocks and stuff, so I decided to go for power. Um, but I run Rock Polish instead of Choice Scarf this time, replaced Aerial Ace with Rock Polish. Then I had Earthquake, Rock Slide, Close Combat, Max Speed, Max Attack. Um, I just needed, this was my thing that could just rip holes in his team, you know, so I thought, right, let's just go full out for it. Um, Mega Alakazam was back. The only change I made here was I removed Focus Blast and replaced it with Hidden Power Ground because it could hit Heliolisk, um, although I could hit that with Psychic probably for more damage. Um, Magneton, four times super effective if you wanted to bring it, and Mawile, Mega Mawile. Um, I could play around with that thing if I had to. Um, have Substitute on here as my last move to get around Sucker Punches. Um, moving on, we have Cresselia. And I changed this thing's move set around uh, a bit actually. It now has Moonblast instead of Psychic and Hidden Power Fire instead of what was my move I had? I had Thunder Wave, oh Luna Dance, um, Hidden Power Fire for Mawile and for his Magneton and I think that might have been it. I don't know why I ran Hidden Power Fire on this thing, I think it's because the IVs were better or something this way at level 50. Um, 
but that was that thing, otherwise it was physically defensive as per usual, or mine as per usual. Then I bought Choice Scarf Mensa, it's actually mixed, Fire Blast, Earthquake, Aerial Ice, Dragon Claw, uh, Scarf to outspeed, uh, Scarf Kyra in black if you decide to bring it, um, and then just KO that thing with Dragon Claws. I bought Intimidate on it, I was so close to bringing Moxie, but I didn't in the end because I knew he had... He has Steel types and he has Fairy types, so I couldn't lock myself into Dragon Claw safely and then just sweep from there, so I wasn't too confident in doing that. And then my last Pokemon was Focus Sash Chandelure, which replaced Raikou for this battle. And uh, I definitely think Raikou wouldn't have done too much this game because he's got lots of electric. Oh, he's got two electric types and dragons, so. Um, I figured that Chandelure would be a good stop to, or a good check to Mawile. I know Mawile gets Sucker Punch and Knock Off. But um, if you wanted to set up a substitute, this thing gets infiltrated so I can burn it or just attack it from behind, you know. Um, I've got Focus Sash just in case I do want, I, so I can live a Sucker Punch um, if I did decide to go for it. I mean, I could have just gone for a will o -Wisp predicting that. Burn him, happy days. Um, max HP, max special attack. Didn't really want speed on this thing. This thing could also outspeed a few mon on his side, um, or could potentially or outspeed a few mon if he did get Trick Room up and I could bring this thing in. Um, and that was it, briefly. Oh, this thing has Energy Ball, Will Wisp, Shadow Ball, Flamethrower. Um, so that's my team briefly. Sorry I couldn't do it in the same detail as I did last week, but I am really busy, time pressured, doing stuff for other people as well, so it's quite hard. But that was a really short intro, guys. It's time to get into the battle. Okay, guys, here we are. My game against Oscar, aka Fred. Man, it was exhilarating. Anyway, I knew Fred was going to start off with Kecleon or Behem. I knew. I knew I needed the critical hit stone to take this thing out. This is a well-trained Terrakion. Terrakion gets that crit stone edge. Immediate 6-5. However, I knew that luck could come my way way too quickly, and this was gonna come back and bite me in the ass at some point later on. Anyway, he brings in Latios. I know I can't stay in and take a actually no, calculation showed there was a very slim chance I could take a side shot from this thing. However, I swap into Empoleon to ex to take the expected special attack. Turns out he gives us a trick, and apparently I'm accidentally MLG because I forgot to give my Empoleon leftovers like I was meant to, and I got stuck with a choice scar. So I figured, hmm, rocks, is that what I need right now? I don't know. I'm going to lock myself into Scald, try and get a burn on something. In comes the Kecleon, I'm thinking, right, this, thing's pr this thing is going to be uh, physical if it is offensive. I get the burn, that's beautiful, because this thing, it turns out, is an offensive set. But it is this trick Ramon, I am choiced. I couldn't stop it anyway, but he is going to get his Trick Room up on his Kecleon on this turn, so I'm thinking, right, what have I got that's slow? Um, plus, Cresselia can also stop this uh, Kecleon pretty well, apart from Shadow Sneak and Knock Off. Um, they're the things that he could hit me with, and Sucker Punch. Um, Kecleon's down to half health, though, so he's got one Trick Room Setter Upper. I don't know if that's a word, but weak, so I'm thinking, cool. Um, he's really weak. The burn saved me there. Oh, well, actually, it wouldn't have killed me without the burn anyway, but he knocks off my leftovers. I expect that I go for the Moonlight. In hindsight, I should have gone for the Moon Blast. Because from there, it would have probably killed or done nearly enough. Or done enough as to where the burn would have taken him out. And that would have been both his Trick Room users gone. And that would have been so beneficial to me. But it didn't happen. It always happens when you look back at battles. You always know what you should have done. Anyway, he swaps into Mawile now. I'm prepared for this Mawile. I have HP fire. However, Fred's a smart cookie. I did go for the Moon Blast. I should have gone for that HP fire, predicting that quite obvious switch. But I didn't. I just went for the safe Moon Blast, trying to kill that thing. Because I knew that if I could hit that thing, it was dead. Um, anyway, he does Mega Evolve, and he does go for the Substitute. I ran the calcs. I put four special attacking EVs in this thing, so HP fire would break him. But of course, Fred creeps me with the EVs and has four special defense EVs. And that means I get the minimum roll, which doesn't break the sub, because there's still about a 90% chance of me breaking the substitute. Didn't happen. So, makes up for that early game crit. There is the Sucker Punch, and now I go for the Hidden Power. Kind of, I didn't have to. I could have gone for a Moonlight, I guess. Um, although I was at full health at this point, so I don't really see why I would have. But I did go for the Hidden Power Fire, and I kill this thing off. Now, the Trick Room's gone. He honestly thought... Uh, I, I expected him here, sorry, to go for a Sucker Punch, so I deliberately went to fi uh, HP Fire to get some more damage on this thing. I get the crit, he gets the player off and misses. Uh, at this point, I'm like, 
Oh god, this is this thing's gonna this game's gonna be so hacky, something's gonna go wrong at some point. Um here he thought I'd let him kill me because you know, play rough would have killed. Uh, I don't know if play rough would have killed. I know it does I uh, know I think it can do up to 48%, so it could have killed from there. Um so that was me being stupid and not moonblasting. Uh moonlighting, sorry. Uh, in comes Mensto to get that intimidate revenge kill with the EQ. Um, in comes Latios though, I go for the flamethrower because obviously that would have killed, and I can hit Latios, admittedly not for much, but it's something. I don't get that burn, which is a shame, but I have to switch out now because this thing could drop the hottest of Dracos on me, hotter than your mixtape. But I go safely into Empoleon, and here comes the Draco Meteor, um, and just watch how little this does to especially defensive Empoleon. I mean look at this, look at this, that's pathetic damage. It is max speed Latios, as I do find out later on, but he's now at minus two. I am a mine, uh, sorry, I am now a choice scarf Napoleon. This is not good. In comes Dragouge. I am going to go for Stealth Rock, and now I'm here thinking, if I switch something in, it dies. Because he's going to go for Draco, so I decide to stay in and take this thing like an absolute man. This is choice specs. Adaptability Draco Meteor, and I take uh, about 80 damage. So obviously the next one wouldn't kill me. Now, this was a real big, big opportunity for me here. I was so close to switching out, not expecting the Kecleon, but I was thinking, is he going to switch or is he going to stay in and try and kill me? Turns out, I stay in and it was the wrong decision. Because this Kecleon lives with about 1 HP, which means he can get one last Trick Room up. And this one last trick room is pivotal because my team is fast. And with this trick room, he can now bring in his Mawile, his Kyrem, his Dragalgy, and outspeed my whole team. So at this point, I'm like, well, poop. I was in control, admittedly, with hacks going my way. And now it's all gone tits up because. In comes the Kyurem, and I'm like, well, shit. Empoleon's gone. He can lock himself into a dragon move. And I had nothing, as both my defensive walls were gone. So at this point, I was like, right then. Oh no, sorry, I have Empoleon left. However, Empoleon's so weak because of the Draco Meteor, I die to this outrage. This thing has base 170 attack. It's ridiculous. Obviously, this thing is such a good special uh, mixed attacker because it gets a base 120 special attack as well. It's ridiculous. Anyway, um, he is a life orb, so he's not choice banned. Choice banned is scary. This thing, I cocked up here so hard. I am focus sash, so I know I can take one. Um, and I go for the shadow ball, and I'm thinking to myself at this point in game, he's a dragon. Better not go for a fire move. He's dragon ice. Flamethrower has got a higher base special power than shadow ball. And because Shadow Ball is not enough to KO, if I'd have gone for the Flame Threat, it would either have been enough to KO and or where he would have died to Life Orb next turn. And that means his Kyrim would have gone down one turn sooner than it does. And this is pivotal because I'm now forced to bring in my Alakazam. I'm going to Mega Evolve and I'm going to Substitute. If I get the Substitute up, it's probably my game because he would have to bring in Mawile, Sucker Punch, all that jazz. If he breaks through sub uh, sorry, confusion, I'm fucked because he is in Trick Room still. There is one turn left. I had to sacrifice something. Turns out, probably not the right idea to sacrifice Mega Alakazam. Um, and the confusion he breaks through. And at this point, I was like, no, I had this in my own hands. And I've just gone and thrown it away. Um, Zam dies. And at this point, it's two versus three. His team has been weakened slightly. His Mawile is nearly dead. His Dragalgy, I think, is at max health still. And his Latios has had a little bit of damage. And I have Terrakion. And this was the final stupid play I made. He brings in Latios. I know, I know, naturally, Terrakion doesn't outspeed. Even though I'm, especially even if, if, if he's modest and I'm adamant, I still don't outspeed. Yeah, I bring this thing in. All I had to do was bring in Ments and force a switch into Mawile. But no, all I have left is Salamence, and this Salamence can't take out all the Pokemon. I have Aerial Ace, it's the only thing I can hit his team, Fred's team with. Doesn't do enough, it does a lot, but it can't KO this Latios, which is a shame, and that means the, this hot Draco 
is going to finish off my Salamence. If you'd have missed that, the game might have been different. Might. Uh, well, I would have probably still lost, but it would have been closer. But guys, that's it for today. I am rock bottom of the league. Um, make sure you leave a thumbs up for this battle, guys. Go check out Fraud's, Fraud? Fred's channel below. Um, I can't believe I lost again. But anyway, I'm up against Troy next week, the newcomer, the replacement for Layson. So this should all be exciting stuff. Team building is already in process. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Um, go check out the PPL, Twitter, and uh, YouTube channel. Otherwise, I'm rambling, so I'll leave you guys, and see you next time. Bye.